What happens if I told you that you can make thousands of dollars a month in real estate without actually having to own the real estate? It's unbelievable. Today, I'm here with Nini, and she owns three Airbnb properties, and she was able to get them with zero dollars down using business funding. Today, we're gonna walk through her property, and we're gonna ask her a couple questions on how she got started. Nice. Hey y'all, my name is Nehemia, super, super excited. I can't wait to pour more information into you, so make sure you tune into this video. Okay, let's go. Welcome to my property. It is called Luxury Themes in West Philadelphia. We got a door lock, of course, and it changes. Then you got the ring camera because, you know, give me one. Then as soon as you come into the unit, wow. we have the record dome wall, it gives you a vibe. It's like the whole thing, the whole vibe. Cool. So where did you get um, the furniture? Facebook Marketplace? Did you So this is from Amazon. The, the chairs are from Amazon. The pictures are from Ross. When it comes to designing your unit, of course you want to give it a nice vibe. Yep. Inspiration is inspiration. But you want to make sure that you're staying below your budget, right? At all times. So because how much go ahead. How much how much are the chairs? If you if you remember off the top of your head. Mm, like two fifty. Two fifty? Two fifty for probably that just couch that couch. Two fifty for the couch and how much for the chairs? Probably like one sound. I one can't something, remember. okay. One and something. then this table and then these designs. I see like these little accent pieces, like the gold. Yes. Like these green and golds. Okay. Ross. Ross. Now what so, is what is Ross for people that don't know what it is? Um, it's a store. It's a store that you can save a lot store. of money at. Oh, I know like, it's a road. I said it's like Burlington Coat Factory. It's oh, like a thing. They close the store. No, they just re they resell other items for like a cheaper price. For like a cheaper price? Like, is, is it nice? Thank you. I had to go to different stores because let's just say one of Ross had it, but then I had to go to a different location to find out other paintings. So this is how it kind of came together. So, paints, the person who painted this unit was my father. My father and I, we took our time to paint the unit. And you'll see the, the pink room, that's like my favorite room. Took the most time in it, so yeah. So talk about the design of the living room. Like, how did you come up with all this design? Like, I see these portraits over here. Yes, so, so first of all, everything was absolutely like blank, regular canvas. And for me, I wanted a living room that gave the luxury vibe so that you could see with the green. And then of course, it, it gives like artists at the same time because we have this leafy wall here. This is supposed to be for champagnes for people who have game night and birthday. And then it's like a 3D wall ball behind the TV and an LED light. So whenever you're watching TV, it's a good vibe. Nice. So this is the pink room. This is my baby. Um, this wall is completely DIY. These flowers are from Amazon. I probably took about like five packaging um so people could come in here and how long does this take you give it take like maybe like a week or two okay. but only because we had to stop we had to stop come back and things like that yeah okay so let's get some prices so how much did this room cost in total for those who want to start the airbnb business how, how much did this room cost in total Ooh, how much did the room cost in total i'm not gonna lie this is probably less than a thousand dollars right there thousand dollars like, what was the thought process behind this business? Ooh, for me, I always wanted to own something, something close to property, um, because I know for me, like, I want to leave a legacy for my family. So that comes with owning. And so when it comes to Airbnb, this is like, to me, the fastest way, the quickest way to get into real estate without owning the property. I like to be creative. So Airbnb, I knew for sure, like, this has to be the industry that I'm going to go ahead and excel in. Like, I love traveling. And when I travel, I don't really go to hotels. I go to Airbnbs only because they have the best experiences. You can do anything. You can cook. My family, my family is Haitian, so every time we go outside, we love to cook. So it, it just allows you to do whatever you want, and I wanted to give that experience to the next guest. So yeah. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. And um, for people that want to know, how long did it? Because I know people are gonna be like, oh my goodness, because it's called Airbnb arbitrage, right? Short term rental. Short arbitrage. Oh yeah, short term rental arbitrage. That's yes. what you call it. Yes. People call it Airbnb for short. People call it Airbnb for short because you're not just renting your Airbnb. Like, where else are you renting this out? Yes, you're doing it on Booking.com. You're doing it on Verbo. You're doing it on Expedia. You're doing it on multiple booking sites. So Airbnb is just a booking site. This is not what we do. Short-term rental arbitrage is when you're asking somebody for a property 
property, you're asking them, can I sublease it to a next, another person so that you can start your business? What is subleasing for people that don't know? Right, so subleasing is like sublet. Let's just say I own a property and you're like, hey, can I rent out your property but then allow other people to go in and out the property as well? So that's like sublease. Okay, so you're making money off the, let's say, um, after you pay the wife, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the person that owns the house, of course, it's their property, so they have to pay the mortgage. Right? So let's just say they're like, well, in order to stay here, you have to pay me $1,500 a month. Right? You know in your head, I have to make $1,500 a month. $1,500 a month is like the operating expenses. I have to make $1,500 a month for the landlord and then the rest of the profit is mine, excluding, you know, the water bill, the electricity, and all that other great stuff like gas. Um, and that's really it. So welcome to my other room, gold and black, one of my favorite colors. You know, you're looking at the record wall. Um, as you can see, I just love music. At this point, we got Motown on the wall, and then we have this wallpaper here wow. with this beautiful bed frame. Something basic, but with a twist, you know, at the same time. And then the TV, you know, it's really like a chilling room for individuals that just wanna come, stay the night, um, and just, you know, just feel very, very comfortable. So this room was really cozy, the other one, is more so like a content space. So in terms of funding, how did you fund the Airbnb? Because I know you told me like the other room cost, uh, you said a thousand dollars? Less than a thousand. Less than a thousand dollars. How did you fund this? Because you know, because since you're renting, you have to pay like the first month, you have to pay the security deposit. Yeah. How are you able to fund this business? Ooh, absolutely not with my money, uh, but with the bank's money for sure. Um, there are interest credit cards. That are, there are no interest credit cards. So 0% interest for the first year, for the first 12 months. Mm. So after I got my funding, funding is just money, right? After I got my money, so like just to say a Chase business card, right? It's 35,000. You don't need 35,000 to start an Airbnb. You don't even need $10,000. So let's just say I just used $8,000 from that, right? To start my business, right? You have a minimum to pay just like a regular credit card. That could be $100, that could be $200. So I use that money from my credit card to go ahead paid the first and second and the last to get the keys, did my decorations, and so within my first six months, my goal is to pay back the debt on that card so that I can be a profit. Hey, but wait, you gotta run it back. How did you get the card? So you're basically saying, cause I know a lot of people, like I see stuff on the internet, it's like, oh, you could go to the bank, get a no documentation loan, and right, you could right, get right. like 35,000, 50,000 right. dollars. How are you able to like, give me like the steps of how to do that. They say no doc. What that really means is you're not really showing them a lot of documentation. So you're not showing them any tax returns. You're not showing them any profit loss papers because you're a new business and they know that. So how did I get started? So it all goes back to towards your personal credit. You have to have a good personal credit, 680 or higher to go ahead and get business funding, right? I'm always going to emphasize the 700 club. Right, if it's not the 700 club, then 680. Right, there's data points that the banks have in order for you to get approved for a business credit. So, what does that even look like? You want to make sure that you have nothing negative on your account no collections, no late payments, no repossessions, no charge offs, nothing negative. Right, so after you do that, you want to make sure that you have at least three accounts. Right, your credit limits, you want to have more than three thousand dollars. Three accounts meaning three credit cards or like three um, loans, like it could be it could be anything. So three credit cards, three loans, whatever the case may be, like your whole credit history has to have at least more than three to five accounts. Three to five accounts, okay. Makes sense. Makes okay. Sense. So along with that being said, you wanna have more than five years of history, right? For your average. Five years of history. Yes. And so a lot of people get something called an authorized user. Right, you could get that on TradelineSupply.com where let's just say I had a credit card and you just wanted to be on my wait, wait, credit say card. Wait, wait, say that again, say that again, TradelineSupply.com. Yes. And I could buy a trade line. Yes. And what is, and explain what a trade line is. So a trade line is just like a credit card. A trade line is allowing you to have access to my credit card, to my credit. Wait, is it legal? Yes, very legal. Very a legal. lot of people do it, a lot of people do it. How much, how much did you pay, if you could share? Oh no, of course. Um, For me, it was probably like 900. Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred or seven something. Is but that it, it? It's between seven to nine hundred dollars for that limit. Okay, so between seven hundred, seven hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars for a credit limit of twenty thousand and year eight years. No. How many years was like, it? It was like fifteen plus. Fifteen plus years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it all, I, go ahead. It all depends on the person, like the Chase Inc. What that's the that's the amount that's the price that I paid for mine. But let's just say somebody else has you know, a BOA card, right? It could be 
15 years, they might have a cheaper price, right? It, it's really all up to the person. So it depends on the bank. Home. The bank, the bank that you choose determines the price. So like, not the bank, the card holder. Let's just say you had a card and you're listing it on Trade Line Supply. Mm. So other people, like my friends and my family, they can purchase your card, right? And your credit limit and your credit history will be utilized for only two months, right? They pay for that just so that they can get approved from the bank, right? Wait, it's, only, it's only two months. Yes. And that's why oh. you have to go ahead and do your funding process. Oh, so you have to do it. So as soon as you get the trade line, as soon as you buy it, you only have two months? To run all your place. Wait, so question. That's a, that's a whole other business in itself then. So if I wanted to put my Yay. card to do a trade line, I could charge I could charge somebody $900. Let's say I charge them $1,000. So 10 people to get, so I just made $10,000. Yes. And they only have it for two months? Yes. So that means once I get the trade line, I have to execute right there yes, and there. Because you're wasting time. Why get an AU if you're not going to do anything with it, right? Think about it though, because the banks are only going to match what's on your personal credit. A lot of people want $20,000, but if you're looking at your personal credit, you only know how to use $1,000. So if they look at your personal credit and it looks like you already had $20,000, oh, it's no problem for me to go ahead and give you $20,000 or $15,000. Because if I look at your personal credit, it looks like you already had access to that. Makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so now you got the credit line. $20,000, 15 plus years. What was the next step? You went to go apply for What was your, um, I don't know if you want to answer. What was your credit score like before and after? Like, did it jump? Did you see like a significant difference? Oh, for sure. No, my credit score, I never had bad credit. 720, 720, 715. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I almost panicked because I thought I had one late payment, but it wasn't a late payment. Um, I was panicking. It wasn't a late payment. Um, so for me, after I got the AU, what I think says seven eight. Wait, wait, wait. What's, late, what's AU? Authorized user. Authorized user. So okay. after I purchase it, you know, my utilization automatically goes down because because twenty thousand slapped onto the um the um how long, that I had. So question, how long does it stay on your actual like report? Does it stay forever or like two months? And then after the two months, what happens? It comes up like in the Oh, so like it never happened? It like disappears? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the next step that you did after? So after that, you go ahead and do your funding process. So that's you getting credit cards. This is you getting money, right? So you might get money from Chase. You might get money from BOA. You might get 10,000 from TD. You might get 20,000 from Tuis. You're collecting all this money so that you can go ahead and run the play. That's exactly what I did. Now with your funding process, you know, this is when this, what I mean by funding process is when somebody else is doing your funding for you, or you can go ahead and apply to these banks by yourself. Now, very, very important when you're talking about business funding, you have to also know that if you're doing it on your own, this is just a tip y'all. If you're doing it on your own, a lot of applications are getting denied because when they ask you how much is your business making and you're a startup, some, some people put $0, some people put 20,000. You have to understand that when they say no doc, that is called stated income. So you can put 100K on that application because you're projecting that your business is gonna make $100,000 so that you can get approved for okay. the funding. Even if your business doesn't make $100,000, it doesn't affect you? Yes. Okay. Because that's projected income, right? So that's when they say, no doc, I just came out the bank with $50,000. That's true because they're putting a projected number on that application and that's how they're getting approved. Got you, got you, got you. Um, now let me go back to the question though. Sorry, that was just a quick tip. Now, so after I get the money, um, another quick tip. So if somebody's doing your funding, please do not be surprised if they charge you nine or 10%. That That's just what it is, I'm not gonna lie. Unless you're doing it on your own, only because they have relationships with banks where the bank is gonna go ahead and pull your credit so that you get approved for these applications. Now, your funder is gonna charge you a fee. That's nine or 10%. So let's just say I give you $50,000 and I charge you 10% as a success fee. You have to understand, I gave you $50,000, you have to give me $5,000 as my profit. Does that make sense? Wait, no, why, why do I need a, like someone to fund, like do it for me? I don't understand yeah, that yeah, process. Yeah, 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 that's a good question. So, okay, so the reason why you may need a funder is because a lot of people will get denied because they don't know the data points to apply when it comes to these applications. So in terms of, you know, what do I need on my personal side? Like a lot of people don't know that they need an AU, right? You need more than five years of history on your credit report. So if you don't have that and you apply for a business credit card, you're out the door. Oh, so it's just information at the end of the day. Yes, yeah, so you have information. information. Okay, so if I, so if, if there's a success fee, 
and now I got fifty thousand. I have to give you five thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm that means I'm in the whole five thousand plus the money that I have to pay for the business and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, we keep going. Did but you get your deal funded? I did. Okay. So I'm telling you this because this is exactly what I went through. But also you have to remember that sometimes like you might watch this video like why would I do that if I could do it myself, right? And it sounds so easy, but when you're filling out these applications like by yourself, there's certain things that you really don't know what to put, right? Because if you put too high of a number, they are gonna get denied in terms of what do you make on an annual income or what does your business make on an annual income, right? Like I said, some have stated income but certain banks they have their rule of thumb. So you have to know what that number is. And the funder, they know because they do this. They have relationships with banks, so they know. And when they're doing their funding, they're able to pull different applications as a sequence. All right, you just follow your sequence and come home. Understand? So let me give you a credit tip. So there's three bureaus. There's TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, right? So when it comes to pulling your credit for the business funding, because that's something called like a personal guarantor. When you are getting business funding, they have to look at your personal credit if you're doing it the PD way, which is a personal guarantor. Like just what like- is PD, What does PD stand for? Personal guarantor. P-O-P, -P. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So just like if you needed a car, but then you needed like a co-signer, mm. they may need somebody else to see like if they're, if the, if. they gotta get somebody else to see if you're credible of that car or that car, that makes sense. So when it comes to the banks, they have to look at your personal credit to see Okay, well, she's good with her finances. Nothing looks negative. So, you know, because she looks good on her personal side, we're gonna go ahead and get her money on her business side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's the PG way, right? Before I even talk about that other side of business credit with that EIN number. Now, if you're talking about funding, now you're like, why do I need a funder in the first place? Because there's sequences, right? Every bank has pulls from a different bureau. So this is just an example, example. Let's just say Bank of America pulls from Experian. Let's just say Truist pulls from TransUnion. Let's just say Navy Federal pulls from the other bureau, right? I can pull, I can get three credit cards from one inquiry. That makes sense? That makes sense. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Exactly. So they know what they're doing in terms of the sequence because sometimes we'll apply, we're like, okay, well, I can just Sequences do Sequence just means the, 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 the times you get the card? Like the order. The order you get the card. Yeah. Because let's just say- Does it matter though? Does it matter? Yes. Because let's just say you do three banks that pull from the same euro. Now you're getting three inquiries on that one, on that same day. You can't get any other other you can't get any other credit cards from that bureau because now if you apply for a credit card, you may you may get declined because you they're looking at their inquiries because if it's less than 3, you're fine. But if it's more than 3 or if it's recent, you may get declined because now they're like why are you? Why did you just go to Bank of America for some money? Why did you go to this other bank for some money? The banks like to give money to people that seem like they don't need money. So this is why, like, even when we do Experian, Experian is my favorite, right? I do business funding, by the way, right? Experian is my favorite only because I can pull a bank from Experian, call, get that inquiry off, and then run another play, meaning another application. So for every application that I'm doing, I'm calling, I'm taking that um, inquiry off, and I'm doing it again. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Did I lose that, you? No, that makes sense because I know credit, but I know the, for the people that don't. The, so, okay. the, so the sequence that you were saying before is um, you could get three. So so the, ideally you would want to go for, let's say, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You would want to get one from each place. Mm -hmm. And that will only be seen as one mm -hmm. inquiry. Mm -hmm. One inquiry from each bureau. One inquiry from each bureau. Yeah. How do you get the how do you get the three cards with one inquiry that you were saying? Was that just an example of that you could actually do this? Let me think. Hold on. Now I really gotta think because I gotta remember. No, I think I no, wait, ooh. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Amex. So for Amex, for example, like with Amex, they're gonna only do one hard pull, and for every other credit card that you get with American Express, that's a soft pull because they already have a relationship with you. Mm, okay. Make so, that so you could get the cold, you could get the plum, you could get you know, different cards if you qualify, but for every other card after that, it's a soft pull. You're okay. gonna get approved. What's a hard pull versus a soft pull? Yes, for your question. So a hard pull is when they're looking like maybe at all three of your scores, and when every time you do a hard pull, you can lose about three to ten, um, ten points off your credit report. If they're doing a soft pull, they may look at only at one score. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, so to the real back end. So now, so now you. Um, oh, sorry. 
I gotta say this. So right. when it comes right. to soft pools and hard pools, you know when they like, you could get a pre-approval, a pre-approval for this car, and a pre-approval for Discover. So every time you do a pre-approval, like let's just say JCPenney, like hey, let me see what you qualify for. That is a soft pool. They're gonna just check it once, you know? But let's just say you go to the car dealership. The car dealership, they're gonna look at all three of your scores, right? To go ahead and see like which one that you apply for. Every time you get a hard inquiry, that's about 10 points or off. That's about 10 points off of your score right there. But when it comes to like, let's just say credit cards, for example, the time that you accept that pre-approval, it now becomes a hard inquiry. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That so makes sense. If, you are, if you're trying to apply for a credit card, whether if it's business or personal, do pre-approvals first because it's a soft pool. Right, but and soft pool has no points. No points get deducted from a soft pool. Yes. Right? No so you can do as many soft pools as you want. Yes. And it's only a hard pool. That's going to deduct it. That's going to deduct it. And Okay, so do as many. So all those letters that you get in the mail for like the pre-approvals, you should. I mean. In the, in the, not, not, not every because. Like, come on now. Credit one, don't. I'll, I'll, you know what I'm talking You don't know credit one. So now you told us how to get funding. Guys, we're doing a podcast later, so if you guys want to take the full breakdown and everything, make sure you guys tap in. But, um, so you got funded. How much money did you get funded? Can you say that or no? Um, over 50K. F over 50K. Okay, and what's the first dance you did? I went to go get a mentor in the industry that I'm in. I think that's very, very important. Don't get me wrong, like, when it comes to Airbnb, um, you know, you go on YouTube, you can watch many different videos, but I know the type of learner that I am. I need somebody that's in the industry that can walk and talk me through everything. Meaning from the, the lease application, you know, making sure the landlord is not doing me dirty, um, you know, helping me like um, enter the whole journey. Like I know that you people sell courses all the time. And don't get me wrong, I can learn from those courses, but I need like a one-on-one. So shout out to Miss Bella Vaughn, all right? That Wait, that's your mentor, Miss Be Bella Vaughn? Yeah. yeah. Okay. She really did what she had to do, like walked my hand um, in terms of like looking for the unit, in terms of calling these people, what to say, how to even negotiate. That was like my biggest thing and I feel like you won't get that in no video. Wait, it's a mentorship program or is it like a one-on-one -on -one coaching? Um, It was a mentorship program, but it was like a one-on-one -on -one coaching at okay, the same gotcha, time. Gotcha. So that was the type of one, that was the type of mentorship that I wanted. Now also when you're thinking about mentorship, you have to have the, the winning mindset too. Because you have to remember with funding, I, re I was already like in a hole because I had to pay my funder. Does that make sense? That's true. So now I have How to- How much did you pay your funder? Can you share that or not? Let's just say over 3K. Over 3K, okay. Okay, cool. But I already, I, I knew that beforehand because it's like, if I'm paying you three, let's just say, I'm paying you three to $5,000 so that you can give me more than $50,000, what's the problem with that? That's how I'm looking at it. That's what's true. the problem with that? There's no problem with that. There's okay. no problem with that. So along with that being said, I had to go ahead and get a mentor. Now a mentor is not cheap at all, especially one-on-ones, they are not cheap. So that mentorship was about 2,000 and some change. I was willing to pay that because I understood. That's the information the, though. Exactly. The information. I'm okay. paying for the information, I'm paying for this person's time. And there's people out there that's like, nah, I'd rather go on the internet. That's and that's and that's you could do that, and you could do that. That's you, but I feel like that takes longer. You trying to figure it out. Why would I reinvent the wheel that's already created? Mm -hmm. If this person has the results that I want, this person can help me get to where I need to get to. And also you're paying for people's network. Because I've mm. been my mentorship, oh my God. Because I've been my mentor, I was able to get connected with a realtor, right? And a realtor, this, wait, y'all, I'm playing our game. And the realtor that I got was able to put me on into a landlord that First of all, he had many different properties that people were able to do Airbnb in. So it's like, you're paying for more than that because before I even met my mentor or before I even like um, got approval, all of this, I was getting a hundred O's, easy. Like I did the cold marketing, like I even went on Fiverr, hired somebody so that they could go ahead and look at locations for me and do the cold calling for me because at the time I had a job. So I was doing like 10 calls a day, right? Getting back to my phone, I used to work in a hospital so you can't be on your phone all the time. So I was, you know, emailing people on the weekends, the weekends like heavy calling, emailing people like these subjects, no, 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 no. We don't do Airbnb, we don't do Airbnb. And you getting a lot of notes, you're like, oh my freaking gosh like how are these people talking about you could do airbnb everywhere but then i feel it. like you can't mm -hmm. because for certain states heavy restrictions heavy restrictions like new york bans airbnb now and so for me i wanted to do philly but philly was at a time where they were also moving the regulations where you needed a license no god no god please i think the problem that people have with mentors is a lot of people get scammed 
There's a lot of people that like they will buy the same nice cars, post up in front of nice yeah. cars, lifestyle marketing, <laughs> and then they will like you feel me like finesse you. Yeah, I understand. Like people that's not really in the business, they just teach the business. Yeah. You feel me? That's me? good. I understand. But how'd you find your mentor? Um, honestly I see my mentor no, my friend of mine had a podcast, um, and then I seen her and then my other friend who did literally my funding, he brought her up like, yo, she does Airbnb, she's from New York, I know her. I'm like, oh, okay, well, connect me with her. And then that was it. Like I said, networking though, because the only reason why I really gave her like a go was because the person that funded me knew her, right? So it's like credibility. So, you're, so basically like your net worth is like your net worth. Like yes. You know? Okay. Yes, yes, for sure. Okay, so talk about the funding. So now you're 50,000 plus, you're eight thousand dollars in oak. You spent two thousand dollars on the mentor. Mm -hmm. You spent another three thousand to get funded, and then mm -hmm. you what's in the so five thing when you're five thousand in the hole? About give or take. Give or take five thousand. Okay, and what do you do next? You better get the unit and start going to work. So I had to be very creative. I got I signed the lease, of course, and you you get into more hole because now you got to do first security and the rest, right? First security and last. And now you're in a bigger first hole. First, last, security. Okay. Yes, first, last, security. And now you're in a bigger hole. And so now it's like, okay, you have no choice but to like go all in. Like, and that's how I seen it. I knew like, I'm gonna make this money back. Like, there's no way that I'm not gonna make this money back. Like, my goal is to make at least five thousand dollars a month or more. Like, that's the goal because it's a content space. There's different ways that you can make money. Airbnb is all about experience. It's not about real estate. So so, so, so if somebody could come into my Ooh, unit, okay, I like that. I'm serious. If somebody could come into my unit and do events and game nights, a lot of other hosts are not doing that. I'm allowing that, but of course there's a policy. But people respect that because they know, what host you know that's going to allow you to have a game night or more than what the average guest says on the website. Right, so for me, I'm willing to go outside of that to go ahead and make my money back. But along with that being said, the content space, all of that was for a reason because you got to understand Philly is a saturated area. So if somebody's going on Philly um, on Airbnb and they're looking at Philly, why should they come to my unit instead of the next man? Right, for me, I knew like a lot of people come to Philly for games for different types of events, for different types of holidays. There's a lot of hospitals in Philly. So I knew that, okay, well, if I have a content space, I could put it on Peer Space. Somebody could book my unit for about $55 or $60 an hour, whatever the case may be, $100 an hour, whatever the case may be, right? They could come and just take a, a video shoot, a photo shoot, a record or do a podcast just like this, right? And then they can leave, right? Somebody else could reserve it for a night. Somebody else on Peer Space as well could go ahead, let's just say they they don't want to stay the night but they just want to have an event for a couple hours that right there is another package so there's different ways that you can make money but if you have like a regular space where you're just gonna throw on the, the bed sheets and um you know just re regular just regular um and you're not like creative with it i feel like that's what your return is gonna look like you know the more creative that you are the more that you stretch i know for me my biggest thing is marketing like i'm not even i'm not even at like my best peak yet and i'm just getting started because every single month i'm learning something about the industry every single month i'm learning something about marketing right if you don't market your business like who else will like yes it's on airbnb but at the end of the day like that's just one site so for me i use tiktok right the girlies love tiktok everybody loves tiktok and so every time i post my video somebody's like hey like can I um can I can I get the link to your unit? Can I get the link to your unit? This one time I posted it on a Friday randomly. This girl was like, hey, can I book it tonight? So people are ready, use the right hashtags, but you gotta make sure that you're marketing your unit as well. And so for me, like I'm actually gonna make an Instagram page specifically for my creative units because more people got to know about it so the more exposure that people have to it all right a lot of people actually booked it up until 2024 so i know for me all i gotta do is market it all i gotta do is market it and god gonna do what he gotta do that's a fact that's a fact okay so now you have the unit you have a thousand you got hundreds of no's but this mentor was able to guide you down the path help you find the leases and you did everything mm -hmm. you get the unit how, how how long did you get this unit um, I got this unit in May. I got this unit right when I also recently. Yeah, I got this unit in May. No, no, no. June. No May. May. So we got so it's so like six months. June, July, August, September, October. Five months. Five months ago, I I walked in graduation in May. My unit was done in May. 
give or take May or June. First I did unit first. Was, the unit was up and running. And then um, I got my second unit co-hosting about a month ago. And then I'm at my third unit right now. Where do you like see yourself five years? Now, um, five years from now, oh, five years from now, more than 10 Airbnb. More than 10 Airbnb. Okay. I want like town on Airbnb. Town like, on Airbnb. Best content creator you know with the units. Like, you know I touch that. Um, along with that, I really do my own property. So by the time I'm like 25, I really want like more than like two or three properties before I get my own house. So yeah, I want to invest into properties. But yeah, that's what, what type of say. properties are you looking into? Like besides um, the townhomes, multi-family, single family? Multi-families, mul I can't even talk, yes. Multi-family, <laughs> okay, okay, multi yeah, duplexes. So yeah, that's duplexes. what I'm interested in. Closing statements, like what advice can you give to somebody that wants to start the Airbnb units? Let's say um, they don't know what to do, like they, they're scared, fearful. Okay. You me, what advice can you give them? My advice would be you miss 100% of the shots that you never take. So, meaning, if you have an idea, just do it, right? The internet that we have today, everything is literally on YouTube. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to invest. Don't be afraid to take a risk because risk is actually walking out of faith, right? Me taking this first unit, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, please, whoa. please, please, please. Me getting That's my first fire. unit. No, but listen up. Affordable. Me getting my first unit. If you were to look at the numbers, you would tell me, I don't know. I don't know about that, right? Cause I, kn I know the numbers in order to say like, that's a yes. My numbers for the occupancy rate, like on AirDNA, quick tip. AirDNA is like a website that you use to go ahead and see like, you know, the, re the market research. That's my use, right? So if you're looking at the occupancy rate for this unit right here, it was given like 50 or 50 below. So, but not, not too far off, not too far off y'all. And that's, that's in a month, right? 50% occupancy rate? Yes. What, what, um, what number are you looking for? Like, what's the occupancy? You really want, a good number is like 65. But, but if you're really looking, like I do 50% or more. 50% or more. And that's like 15 days out the month that yes. you're yes. potentially could be, okay. AirDNA will tell you like the number that, AirDNA will give you like an estimate of how much you can make a day. Huh? So you would take that number times, you know, 15 to see. If it's profitable or not. And you said before you're looking to make $5,000 or more. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. So looking at that number, it was like, but then when you have a vision and you turn nothing into something, you can't tell me like I can't make the numbers because I'm, I'm making the numbers. So it's like literally when you're looking at a unit, of course, like don't be afraid to walk out on faith. Don't be afraid to walk out on faith. And walking out on faith means if you got to do your first big girl purchase, getting a mentor, then do that. If you got to go ahead and do more research or get a master class, do that. If you have to network, do that because if you sit and do nothing then you already lost that's a fact right if you don't and honestly like if you're afraid of failing to me what i think like if you don't fail at least in something then you're not trying because a lot of people that are actually where they at where they are right now is because they actually try to do something so if you're doing nothing because you're fearful then you're going to be fearful in a lot of different areas that's okay. so yeah so go ahead and get that bag and if you want to tap in with your girl then you know where to find melanini on the ground so yeah yeah, give me your social. Where can people find you? Melanie on the ground. How do you spell that? M E L A N E N E E on the ground. And then Millionaire Knee on TikTok. Millionaire Knee on TikTok. Okay. Um, yes. If you guys made it this far to the video, make sure you guys put faith down in the comments. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Make sure you guys watch the podcast that we're finna do. See you guys in three, two, one. No, joke, joke. We out these waters. Peace. Bye.